Hello everyone. I have uh, just finished the visual novel Seven Scarlet and I want to talk a bit about it and just give you my impressions. Uh, to say it straight away, I have very much enjoyed it. Um, I've been documenting my playthrough on Twitter with lots of screenshots and comments. This romance visual novel came out in May 2018, my notes tell me, and it was a part of the Summer of Mystery that Axis Games was doing a bit of a promotion for, and they published three visual novels that summer, and Seven Scarlet is one of them. Uh, the other two are the highly acclaimed Psychedelica novels, which I have not played yet. So I can't comment on them. I obviously will once I have played them. And I think it's fair to say that while the other two received a reasonable amount of critical attention and uh, were generally positively received, this one here flew perhaps a little bit under the radar. Once I'd finished it, I tried to look up a few um, reviews to just see how other people had experienced it. And I found very few reviews uh, from the regular accredited review sites. In fact, most of the reviewing was done by the much smaller uh, blogosphere, the committed Otomi romance visual novel fan base. But those bloggers tend to be uh, extremely astute. They they play all the Japanese Otomi novels and they're generally very knowledgeable and therefore of course highly critical as well and perhaps a bit nitpicky. I'll go into that in a moment. I would like uh, this video to be both for people who have maybe never played a visual novel before, have never considered playing a so-called romance novel, as well as people who are into this genre already. When I talk about Otome visual novels, I mean in the Western sense, romance. Uh, so in the West we know it, I suppose, as what used to be called a pulp fiction genre, so not usually very highly rated or considered. Uh, and they can, of course, be very formulaic, those romance novels. When I was a child, uh, that sort of thing was only available in sort of a fat magazine format, and you bought it uh, at the um, supermarket or the old-fashioned grocery store at the checkout. They, they would have them there, and, and the women would sort of pick one surreptitiously, and they had very lurid um, covers, you know. Uh, well, we've come a long way, and uh, romance is a lot more respectable these days, and I think the writing has uh, improved in, in leaps and bounds. The Japanese otome romance genre has proved very popular in the West. I think it surprised many people. One platform that is particularly responsible for making Otome visual novels available in the West and then catapulting them into popularity was, of course, the PlayStation Vita. Uh, so here's my Vita uh, with the game. Uh, the music I found in general to be unremarkable in Seven Scarlet. But there were a few pleasant tracks.
ここまで他どうしたら電話をかけたいのかサンズの川も金次第というがお願いここに来て命乞いか笑おうお前にはこう命すらない悪く思うなよ This is clearly not your typical romance novel. It announces itself very much as a mystery novel. Nani bought to stand. They c o p i n e d the mother. Is she もしかしてあっそそれはお前あんだけぼーっとしてたら誰の話おーいいちこたくまたぼーっとして行ってみないかおくねさと実は俺そのおくねざおくねざと近畿クラブのオフ会が現地I recorded this opening scene between Ichiko and Hino、uh, to show you the start of the story,、uh, but also to demonstrate the quality of the writing, which is, of course, hugely important in a visual novel. I think you can see how very natural the dialogue comes across. It's not forced, and it reads、uh, very easily. and Quite pleasantly, and、uh, I think that applies to the dialogue throughout the novel. The voice acting is, in my opinion, very good across the board. Now, the Summer of Mystery visual novels all came with a small pack of art cards. For the main characters, and I think that was a nice touch. So I'll just quickly introduce you to the main female character, Ichiko. And there are, as is usual with Otome novels, there are five men, five male suitors, providing five story routes、uh, to work your way through. And we'll start off with her childhood friend Hino, the bouncy chef, the very talented chef, Isora. There is a medical student called Sosuke, a somewhat mysterious young man called Toa. And I won't go any further into his background because that is part of the mystery. I'll just say that he has a very strong connection with cats. And the、uh, young man, Yuzuki, who is the manager of the hotel where they're all staying. And on the back, they all have the illustration、uh, that is also on the Vita case, the,、um, the title. Illustration. So very nicely done. And the artwork, and this is interesting, is by Chinatsu Kurahana. Backgrounds by Koya Takahashi. Now she is、um, a very popular artist in Japan. I believe she did the artwork for the long running anime Uta no Prince Sama. Uh, which I'm not familiar with.、Um, and she later was commissioned to do the character artwork for 
Fire Emblem Three Houses. So there you have an interesting range of artistic work. Not surprisingly, people instantly focused on this game because of the artwork. And the game is often cited as being very beautiful. Yes, it is. And the artwork is gorgeous. Yes, it is. And then the comments trail off because people haven't got an awful lot to say about the story. I think that's a bit of a shame. I'm not quite sure why, but the story is intriguing, I found. We have the young woman, Ichiko, who with her childhood friend Hino uh, visits a remote and very old-fashioned mountain village where they stay at a really old-fashioned inn, uh, the only hotel available, uh, because Ichiko wants to try and find information about her brother who disappeared in this village one year ago. So you can see from the start there is a big mystery attached. Now, it is not unusual, especially nowadays, to get romance visual novels or torment novels with a very strong story component. And I think that is the interesting issue here and one that some people stumble over because we're really talking here about a hybrid genre. We have a visual novel that has the trappings of a romance novel with clearly demarcated roots for the individual men who are falling in love with and courting the female main character. And on the other hand, we have a story that can range from anything to from science fiction to the supernatural, as in this case, to a normal story taking place in the modern world. I just wanted to show you some of the novels I just quickly took off my shelf that I have played that would be an example of what I would call this hybrid genre. Um, there's the very well received uh, Collar and Malice, which is an excellent novel with a really, really gripping story centered around a police investigation and incorporating the usual Otome standard of having uh, roots for each individual male character as they develop a relationship with the female character. We have a root letter, which is a particular favorite of mine, that has a whole uh, range of influences in the story, but is set in in modern times and is gives a lot of a slice of life uh, kind of background, while the story sometimes veers a bit into the supernatural. Uh, qu quite a mix, really. And we have Norn 9, which is also an anime, by the way. And that is very much a story is science fiction based, but again, with the uh, standard Otome structure of um, separate routes for uh, the individuals. And finally, a, a game that many people will be familiar with, Code Realize. Now, this really took the visual novel community by storm when it came to the West, and quite rightly so. It's, it's a fascinating read. It's one of the longer visual novels, so people who, who like visual novels and who don't want to let go of the characters, they love this one because you can really get immersed in it and it's not over in like 20 hours. So those were of just a few examples of what I would call a, a hybrid genre where the authors are fitting what is often a linear narrative onto a structure that doesn't normally support that type of linear narrative. Because if you have individual strands via the, the roots for each male character, then you could sort of place them 
side by side almost and then you could compare them and say oh I like this one best and this one had a lovely ending and that's of course how many of the original pure Otome novels um, were like. Now I have to say from my own personal taste the pure Otome novel it's not one of my favorite genre. There isn't enough variety in it for me um, because uh, they all follow a similar format, the roots really. What makes this type of visual novel so different is that they have not only a story but with it comes a theme. And Seven Scarlet very much revolves around the theme of death, loss, grief and memory. And that's a very powerful theme. And while I wouldn't say that it's been explored in really great depth, that's not possible in a, a novel that's roughly going to last you 20 to 25 hours max if you want to do everything. I think in that time frame, they've done a very good job. Uh, I was certainly strongly affected by it and in the end I simply couldn't put it down. I found to my surprise uh, that many of the reviews and commentators did not really go into this theme in any great depth if they mentioned it at all. So I feel that they've they probably missed one of the strengths of this um, story. It certainly had a strong resonance with me. Now, admittedly, I'm at the time of life where my thoughts would be naturally turning towards, uh, you know, death, and naturally my thoughts um, turn to loss and grief and, and how we remember people what the the memory process is like and and how we integrate it into our lives and how we maybe pass that on to the younger generation I have a bit of a feeling that this novel may have not quite received the attention that it deserved, in my opinion. I would rate it quite highly, and it's it's up there. Not I wouldn't say it's one of the very, very best. Uh, very few visual novels are. But it certainly fits in, I think, with the other ones I have shown you. It does have a few flaws, but I have yet to come across a visual novel always accepting Steins Gate. Steins Gate is a big exception for me. I have yet to find a visual novel that didn't somewhere have some flaws. Uh, the one route that is flawed is the uh, route Isora, the young chef. Unfortunately, towards the end, uh, the writers use a very clunky plot uh, design that is simply not convincing. It's clearly there to drive the plot in a particular direction, and it briefly takes the reader out of immersion. People often complain about there are one or two dialogue choices that it didn't quite make sense really or seemed a bit laboured or they weren't obvious. It, it, that always happens and I have yet to read a visual novel where that didn't happen. So picking on that in particular, I think I think it's a minor point really. You know, one shouldn't make too much of that. The way the authors of Seven Scarlet have integrated the story arc, and I mean by that the mystery, into the prescribed five routes, I think is 
really, really well done. You start out with the first two routes, which are which are open, which are unlocked right from the start. Uh, Hino and Isora. But after that, uh, once you've done those, the other ones unlock one after the other. And you have to complete one route completely before the next one will be unlocked. Uh, certain conditions have to be met. Uh, and that makes sense because uh, otherwise the story cannot unfold. You can't just skip around with a mystery story like that. There has to be, there is tension, there's drama, it has to build up. And for that you need a narrative arc that climbs and climbs slowly upwards. And that's only possible if you um, follow a sequence of events. And I think they've done it really well. You work your way through each route and while you experience the love relationship blossoming at the same time, more and more of the secrets, each time from a different perspective, are revealed. You get a deeper understanding of what might be going on. With the next route, suddenly it it's all seems to be overturned and something different is going on. So the mystery is being cranked up um, very competently. And that's certainly one aspect that I really enjoy about stories. That's what I find entertaining in the end. There is one route that is only unlocked once you've done all the five romance routes. And I'm not obviously not going to go into the details for that, but that's the one that will bring the closure. So that one is different. One slight criticism I would have is that a character I'll call a baddie, for want of a better word, um, is sort of quite obvious pretty much early on from the story. Now that sounds like it, the story might be giving away something and it won't be as interesting, but in fact I don't think it's a big deal, honestly, because while you may be suspecting this character, the question is, what of? You don't even know exactly what the mystery is, uh, what is the background to it all, what's really going on. Uh, so you're guessing all the time, and slowly, as the information rolls in, you begin to understand what might be going on, but Honestly, it still comes as a surprise as things begin to really, really unravel by the later um, story routes. So I, I don't think it's a huge criticism at all. Let's face it, if the writers had not thrown even the slightest suspicion on anyone, You'd be sitting there at the end and the story writers would be saying, OK, now we got to pull the rabbit out of the hat and it's like a deus ex machina. And the reader sits there and says, whoa, I never saw that coming. There was never any indication that this character was at all shady or, you know, it's only fair to give the reader something that if you are observant you will latch on and realize I've got to keep an eye on this character. The writers can only go one way or the other and basically I think they've gone the right way. I personally don't like stories where at the end there's a big twist and something I couldn't possibly have deduced is suddenly presented to me and said, this is the solution. This was the bad character all along. You had no idea this was coming. Um, I don't like that approach to stories at all. You know, I, I'd rather the, the writers take me seriously and say, we planted some clues. It's up to you to find them. You know, I think in a way that's not a very good criticism to throw at a story. So the other thing I liked about this novel is that it didn't waste my time. I, I'm a bit of an impatient person and if something goes on for too long 
I, I tend to lose interest quite easily. So this kept me um, glued uh, to the screen, and, and that's a good thing. I felt that a lot of the detail, even just daily life, uh, what seemed to be perhaps a trivial detail at the moment, later on I sort of recognized it and thought, oh, that was mentioned Previously, I see now the significance, there's something else behind it. Uh, so this particular writing skill, you'd have to say, of introducing details later on take on a different significance, that is an aspect that I always enjoy in stories, so that I don't feel there's just detail being piled on for the sake of, you know, creating some kind of atmosphere or a world view where I just sit there and think yeah okay okay but you know what for what's it all doing there I, I prefer it if detail is not wasted and it all contributes to me slowly gaining a better understanding of what's behind it all once again I think they've done very well on that score here so in closing I really enjoyed uh, my time with Seven Scarlet. All I can say is that despite a few minor flaws, I rate this visual novel quite highly. And I think if you wanted to experience this genre, but were perhaps a bit concerned about the romance aspect sort of taking over and you're not sure whether you might like that, uh, I think this is not a bad entry point because, as I said, the story itself, the mystery, is very strong. And the romance scenes themselves, the outright romance scenes, are quite limited and not very long. You can, if it's not your kind of thing, you can easily skip through them quite quickly. As I said, they don't take very long. They're, they're very nicely done. And the atmosphere of the romance blossoming and coming to fruition, so to speak, that atmosphere has a bearing on the overall mystery. I won't go any further, but there are always subtle hints there. Yes, a great introduction, a wonderful story, to read for anyone who enjoys Otome novels. It's not too long, but I found it very satisfying. So once I'd reached the end, I just said, ah, oh, that was wonderful. So I hope that's given you an impression. From my viewpoint, as always, my own personal thoughts and impressions. If you haven't tried one yet, why not give it a go? Thank you very much for watching. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye. Seven Scarlet.